Today we want to study the subject, Wisdom Keys for Joy and Rejoicing. I'm taking part 1A in this first service. Wisdom Keys for Joy and Rejoicing. Remember this is a pre shiloh encounter service. So any good thing can happen and whatever expectation you have come here with will return with you as a testimony. It's also a prophetic entrance service. Today is a talk trumpet day, so we we'll dance, rejoice before the Lord, and he'll be glorified. And you will return with your testimonies. Wisdom keys for joy and rejoicing, part 1a. Please come with me to Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. We're all going to read together. Can we read now? One, two, go. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Can you help me preach that message to your, to your neighbor, by your left, by your right? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. To another one, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. In case they didn't tell you, well, tell yourself. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. God is not a stammerer. And if any time you see him repeating it, it's in, it's because of emphasis. The issue of rejoicing is highly needed today. Joy. Seem to have dried up in the hearts of many. And when joy dries up, everything dries up. According to Joel 1.12. People are going through a lot of tensions. Plus tension, plus tension that have become hypertension. Going through challenges of life. Burdens. And so you see joy is lacking. When you see some people, their faces are too straight. Some people, you're even afraid to greet them good morning because of the way their faces look. But hear me, precious people of God. No matter how life seems unfair, no matter how there seem to be threatening challenges, your health, your marriage, your business, your career, your finances, your relationships, your academics, the prescription of the master is rejoice. And again, I say, rejoice. <laughs> Maybe as I speak now, you are in a toxic relationship or environment. Everything is choking. Please know that this way out is to rejoice. If you don't understand it, ask Paul and Silas. Even in prison, prison is not a place to rejoice, but they were singing and rejoicing. And that was the way out. In the land of captivity, they ask the Jewish boys to sing the lost song. In this. They say, how can we sing the lost song in a strange land? But they didn't know. Had they sang the lost song in a strange land, they could have been free. Please, night and day, always rejoice. Any day you don't rejoice in the Lord is a wasted day. And I enjoy everyone under the sound of my voice to take personal responsibility on this. It's a non-transferable responsibility. Nobody will rejoice for you. Just like no one goes to the convenience for you. There's no day you will get so tired. You say, I'm hungry, but I'm tired. Honey, come and eat for me. You eat for yourself. The same way. Nobody has the responsibility to ensure that you rejoice. You have the responsibility. Say with me, I hear. So rejoicing in the Lord is a choice. It's not a gift. Don't say that pastor, he has a gift of joy and rejoicing. No. It's a choice. And it's a choice of the wise. Every wise person makes this choice. To be grateful or to complain about choices. And you decide which side you fall into. 
Look at Genesis chapter 1. 1 to 3. So you are not a first person to experience a mishap. You are not a first person to suffer a loss. You are not the first person that bad thing happened to. Even God the Almighty. When he created the first heaven and the earth, the Bible said the earth became void. In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth, and the earth was void, and the whole place was covered with darkness. That means something's void. <laughs> but you're not the first person to go through that. But how did God handle it? Did God start crying and weeping and looking for who to blame? You have blamed many people enough. It's time to gather yourself and come back to yourself and rejoice in the Lord. God saw darkness. He didn't allow the darkness to shake him. Regardless of what you are seeing now, I don't know what you are seeing from January till now, never allow it to shake you. See what you want to see. God wanted to see light and he saw light and he said, let there be light. And then light came and God began and created a new beginning. God will give someone here a new beginning. Amen. This December will be like the beginning of months for you. Amen. By virtue of what God will be doing in your life. What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, what has not entered the heart of man, God will give to you. The kind of turnover you have never seen, you will see it this month. The kind of breakthrough you have never seen, you will see it this, this month. The kind of testimony you have never shared, you will share it this month. God saw the light and he said, let there be light. And God created a new beginning. And up to today, what he created after that is still standing. Nobody can tell you where the pillars supporting the earth is or the cloud is. Only God knows. <laughs> so you are not the first person to suffer loss. Don't cry. I'm speaking to someone here today. I don't know who I'm speaking to. You have cried enough. Wipe your tears. No more crying. No more weeping. No more sorrow of heart. No more depression. It's time to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. And again I say rejoice. <laughs> it's time to rejoice. No wonder a songwriter wrote and sang. I will rejoice so. I will rejoice so. I will rejoice so in the Lord. No matter what I see, I will praise the Lord. I will rejoice so. In the Lord. No matter what you see, please rejoice in the Lord. Because that's where your help is. That's the way out. Glory to God. Habakkuk chapter 3. 17 to 19. Because somebody will say, Pastor, why are you talking like this? Because your own is not like my own. No problem. <laughs> Let's go to Habakkuk. Although the fig tree shall not blossom. Habakkuk 3, 17 to 19. Neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail. And the fish shall yield no meat. No breakthrough. No, no testimony. Nothing was working. The floor shall be cut off from the fold. And there shall be no head in the stores. Yet. Say with me yet. <laughs> Anytime you see the word but or yet in English language, it means what I'm about to say is more important than what I've said. Yet. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Yes, I went out. I opened my, my business. I didn't sell. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. Yet, somebody promised to give me money. It didn't come through. Or somebody promised to give me a contract. It didn't come through. Somebody promised to marry me. It didn't come through. I will rejoice in the Lord. <laughs> I will rejoice. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Why? Verse 19. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like iron feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places. Now hear me. What may look like disappointment now is actually disappointment. Look at the sound. Disappointment sounds Disappointment, D-S, D-I-S, appointment, sounds this, T-H-I-X, appointment. So inside that disappointment, if you check it, there's an appointment inside. Check it, spare disappointment, there's an appointment inside. Spare disadvantage, what looks like disadvantage? There is an advantage inside. <laughs> what looks like an opposition now? There is a position there. Opposition is a proof that you have a position. So stop crying. <laughs> it's time for 
you to quit yourself like men. Not any small thing you are crying, any small thing you are weeping, any small thing you are saying, oh, God, I got the witches against me. Ah, no, 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 no. You don't know who you are. Greater is he that is in you than them that are in the world. How can God be in you at any small thing you cry? Any small thing you are looking for who to blame. I have this good news for someone here this morning. Regardless of how the year began, it shall end well for you. Yeah. If you've been careful, I've been sounding these things. No matter how this year began, it must end well in the name of Jesus. What gives me that confidence? Psalm 65 verse 11. He said, thou crownest, present continuous tense, thou crownest the year with thy goodness and thy power drop fatness. God does not have evil. He has goodness. And he said he will crown this year for you. This is the crowning month. He will crown this year for you with goodness. His path for you will drop abundance. So you will walk in the path of abundance. You will walk in the path of plenty. Someone here, supernatural supply will be the answer in your life from now. Now hear me. This Christmas, this will be the best you have ever seen since you were born. Job 8, 7. Though the beginning was small, yet, though the beginning was small, yet, thy letter end should greatly increase. This is the letter end of 2024. 20, so, it shall increase. I pray for you. God will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. Yeah. Psalm 71 verse 21. It said, God will increase your greatness. So, your influence, your impact, your business, your career, everything about you will speak increase. And it will comfort you on every side. No more sorrow. Please understand this, that every child of God is redeemed the bundle of joy. Even the day they get back to you, there was joy and rejoicing. So why, what happened? Who did this thing to you? <laughs> every child of God is redeem a bundle of joy. The day you got born again, you saw how joy was oozing out from you. Say me, I'm a bundle of joy. No more sorrow. No more depression. No more weeping. I am a bundle of joy. Quickly, let's look at the wisdom keys to assess joy. How do we assess joy? What are the wisdom pathway to assessing joy? Number one. When one is saved, he has the joy of salvation, which means new birth. Salvation brings joy. Salvation is actually the basic salary, but there are other fringe benefits that go with it. Glory to God. There are things that accompany salvation. One of those things that accompany salvation is joy. Say me joy. That's why if you don't have joy, I can doubt your salvation. And I don't like people who are always looking morose to be around me. Avoid it because it can be contagious. <laughs> Psalm 51 verse 12. Remember, one of the things that David cried when he lost the presence of God was that God should restore to him the joy of salvation. Which means there's a joy that comes with salvation. And if you are sincere, if you are genuinely born again, you discover that day you go born again. Joy. Feed your heart. And don't allow that joy to go. Because that's what announces the, announce the presence of God. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is, number one, love. Number two, joy. Number three, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, and others. So joy is a fruit of the Spirit. The Bible calls it the spirit of joy. Isaiah 61 verse 3. To appoint unto them that morning in Zion. To give unto them beautiful ashes. The oil of joy for morning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That there might be called the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. God will turn your morning into dancing. No more depressions. No more oppressions. No more sorrow of heart. God will give you the blessings that make rich and added no sorrow. In the name of Jesus. Number two, how do we, what are the wisdom keys to assess joy? We, 
when filled with the Holy Spirit, one has the intoxicating joy of the Holy Ghost. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, that's, so that's why one filling is not enough. You can go for refilling. The apostles got it in Acts 1, in chapter, chapter 4, they went for refilling. So you can keep refilling yourself. When your battery is, is draining, what do you do? You go and recharge it so that it can have full strength again. Psalm 45, 6 to 8. Thy throne, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is the scepter of righteousness. Thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. All thy garments smell of men and aloes and cassia and out of Ivory palaces, whereby they have made thee glad. Because they loved righteousness and hated wickedness, the Lord your God has anointed with you oil of joy, oil of gladness. So when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, you have intoxicating joy. That's what turns your morning into dancing. That's why when you have joy, it's, it's different from, from happiness. Many people, what they have is happiness. <laughs> what they have is happiness. That's why even the Gentiles in chapter two, they, they uh, uh, ask, they when they receive the word, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they glad, had gladness of heart. Now, happiness is environmental. Happiness is circumstantial. Happiness is natural to anybody. You don't need to be born again to have happiness. But sir, if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, you are not baptized in the Holy Ghost, you cannot be filled with joy. It will call, you'll just be coming and going. It will be seasonal. <laughs> if somebody buys a new car now, he's happy. If the car has an accident, that happiness will go. You buy a new clothes now, you are happy. If uh, you enter a bar and then there's something there and you just cut it, <laughs> you discover that, that happiness will disappear. The happiness is circumstantial, is environmental. Eh? Okay, if you say it's not true, carry yourself and go to where somebody died. Eh? And everybody's weeping. You didn't plan to weep, oh, but before you know it, your face will change. <laughs> the environment will affect you. <laughs> Three of us. If you go to where people are rejoicing too, no matter how your face is. Some of you come with a lot of heavy load and yama yama and this. When you, when you are going from this service, you just discover you are smiling. <laughs> so, please, what I'm saying is, you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Because if you are filled with the Holy Ghost, the joy will be natural. It will just be oozing out from you. Is it okay? I can give you an illustration. Even though this may be negative, but please understand. I'm not saying you should go and do it. Now, some, of, some people that drink alcohol, it is called, in places, it's called wine or it's called spirit, true or false. So there's a spirit behind it. When people drink it, all they will get, the highest they will get is happiness. For that momentary happiness, they just forget their sorrow and forget all their problems momentarily. But when the alcohol clears, the thing enters to square two. But you see, it's not like the Holy Ghost We say, don't be drunk with wine, but be drunk with the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost too can be referred as a spiritual wine. Do you understand? When you are drunk with the Holy Ghost, you discover what you now have is joy, not happiness. Do you understand? And then you just see yourself. You don't even, no matter what comes, you are still joyful. Many of us have experienced what I'm talking about. Regardless of what breaks other people down, it will just be a turning point for you to, break, to go up. Hallelujah. Please be filled with the Holy Ghost. Have you not heard in Romans 14, verse 17, that the kingdom of God is not in meek or in drink, but the kingdom of God is in righteousness, in peace, and in joy in the Holy Ghost. If I enter a place now, I can tell you who is a believer without anybody telling me. Your joy will announce to me whether you're a believer. One day I went to dedicate a shop Many years ago in Burkina Faso, for one of us, they opened a, a, a saloon. And I went there, all the staff, they were, their faces were like this. Very strong. I just, when I called him aside, I said, sack these people. They will not get good customers. And it's true. 
In case you have any stuff like that, sack them. They're bad luck. I wrote in my book, Making Yourself Marketable. I said, if you don't, quoting a Chinese proverb, a Chinese proverb said, if you cannot smile, don't open a shop. <laughs> How many of us have gone to some restaurant and the way they treated, even the way, the way they brew the service, you would refuse to go back there. But there's a way they will serve you. you. Before you get home, you say, I want to go back again. If you like, this one is cool, business school now. If you like, learn. If you don't learn, don't learn. Just go and open shop. And every time somebody greets you, good morning. Hey, what is good about the money? <laughs> they won't come again. Smile. Do you understand? Don't you see the thing? When you smile, you welcome. It may, makes you accessible. It makes you welcome. Glory to God. You are not the one that killed Jesus. Every time. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> We access revelation. We access to revelation of the world also steers joy. Access to revelation of the world also steers joy. Anytime you have access to revelation of the word of God, joy comes naturally. Jeremiah 15, 16. Thy word was found, and I ate it, and it was the joy and the rejoicing of my soul. Please try it. You want to keep your joy, just keep having access to you to the revelation of the world. It has a way of bringing joy. Even as I'm preaching now, there's a word that will come to you now. You just see joy comes. When you are reading, maybe when you are studying, just a word strikes you like this. Mm, is it like this? Now I know. Mm, you know, you, sometimes you even pray with it. Find out, did God not answer that prayer? Joy and rejoicing. That's why the psalmist said in Psalm 119 verse 162, He said, I rejoice at thy word as a man that found a great spot. Whenever you have access to the revelation of the word of God, it brings joy. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I don't understand. Okay, see it again in Proverbs 12, verse 25. Proverbs 12, verse 25. <laughs> he said, heaviness in the heart of a man make it to stoop. When you see somebody, you sit at the edge, you wake up in the morning, you sit at the edge of the bed, you sit like this. God, why me? Why is my own like this? Am I the one that killed Jesus? Not that it's too much. Try check what is disturbing the person. Troubles. There's a lot of tension inside. That's why you can see somebody inside AC room, AC car, see sweating. The trouble is. <laughs> Have you seen something like that before? Heaviness in the heart of a man. They're thinking of the house strength. And maybe you borrow money and the thing is due tomorrow. And landlord is also coming. This one, ah. No matter what, the heaviness will make his heart. <clears throat> but the Bible said, a good word make the heart glad. Always look for that good word. When you have access to a good word, it will make your heart to be glad. I rejoice at thy word. As a man that found a great spot. Say with me, I hear. You know, one thing about principles are that they make, they make life predictable. Please follow these things. Quickly, what are the dividends of joy? What are the dividends of joy? What are the benefits? What do I stand to gain when I have joy? Number one, joy provides continuous access to revelation. Joy provides us continuous access access to revelation. Isaiah 12 verse 3. He said, we, therefore with joy shall we draw water out of the ways of salvation. I told you there are many things that are inside salvation, but you can't draw anyone out without joy. You know, some of you are city people I may not be able to describe, but if you have a well in your house that is not bohole well, you know, this time they used to draw do you understand? There is something they use to draw it. Eh? Like a bucket. Is it okay? Joy is like that bucket. Without it, you can't draw the water in the well. The same way, you can't get revelation in the word of God without joy. If you are heavy hearted, no matter what, even here, now somebody can be here, he's thinking of the soup he's cooking at home. All the trouble, uh, challenges in life. You won't hear anything. Nothing will enter. But when you are joyful, it's, look at the parable of the soul. Those that prospered by that are those who receive the word with gladness of heart. And then had understanding. And then they yielded in 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. 
So without joy, sir, you can't get revelation. Isaiah 30, 29 to 30. Ye shall have a song in the night when a holy solemnity is kept and gladness of heart as when one goeth with a pipe to come unto the mountain of the Lord, to the mighty one of Israel. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. And he shall show the lightning down of his hand with the indignation of his anger and with the flame of devouring fire, with scattering and tempest and headstone. It's when you have a song, when you have gladness, you will not hear the voice behind you. You will hear a voice. God's voice cannot be released until you are glad. And you see one thing with revelation is that when you get this revelation through joy, you start going up. You start moving from glory to glory. Galatians 2.2, 2, Paul said, I went up by revelation. It is simple that told her, rejoice. And again, I say, rejoice. So he knows what he's talking about. Without that rejoicing, he couldn't have gotten access to revelation. Paul never walked with Jesus. He never saw Jesus with his physical eyes. So he's a perfect example of the believer today. He never saw Jesus with his physical eyes. But most of the things he got was by revelation, including the communion. Even Uncle Didymus, Thomas Didymus that was there, and many others, they didn't write anything. They didn't understand anything. It's just Thomas without anything. Eh? But he said, what I received was the Lord by revelation, I showed to you. He, he received the mystery of the communion by revelation. He wasn't there physically. So, please, be joyful. It will help you to get access to revelation, which will make you to go up. How many of us want to go up in life? You need revelation. And if you must get revelation, you need joy. So, it's a chain thing. Number two, dividend of joy is that joy secures health and vitality. How we all need health and vitality today. You know, health is worth. If you lose your health, you have lost something substantial. You may not even be able to do much. But no one here will lose his or her health. No more weakness in your life. No more breakdown. Every dying organ is resuscitated right now in the name of Jesus. Proverbs 17, 22. The Bible told us that a merry heart, a joyful heart, doeth good like a medicine. But a broken spirit dries the bone. And you know the bone is where your, your bone marrow is. That's where your blood is formed. And the life of the flesh is in the blood. So, so when your bone is dry, your life is dry, my brother. Have you not seen some people chicken, 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 chicken every time? Something is drying up. <laughs> no joy. Joy do it good like medicine. I used to tell people, hmm? what chloroquine can do, Joyce Queen can do it. Just wake up every morning, take one swallow of one capsule. Mm. Be joyful. <laughs> you have to do another one. Mm. Be joyful. In the night, take another one. <laughs> Glory to God. There's no drug in this world that doesn't have uh, overdose or side effect, but joy doesn't have side effect. The more joyful you are, the better. Glory to God. Help me tell you never again, be joyful. Did you understand what we are saying? Joy will give you health and vitality. So one way, if you don't want to break down, Many of the tension, many of the hypertension people are going through is tension plus tension plus tension plus tension plus tension. It becomes hypertension. The same way too, you can have joy, 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 joy. So you'll be hyper joy. I've got joy, 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 joy. Oh. In my life. So you, you can have joy too. Plenty joy. The same way. So no more sorrow. No more heaviness of heart. Amen. No more pains. Amen. Have you discovered that it takes more muscles to frown your face than it takes to smile? Medically is so. Hmm? To stop carrying your life as if all the whole load in this world is upon you. Relax. Be joyful. Sometimes even they don't have, they don't rejoice with their family. They don't rejoice with anybody. In the office, they are quarreling. In service unit, they are fighting. In anywhere, they are problem. Why must it be you? Anywhere you go, there must be problem. Remember in life, you'll be remembered for two things. The problems you solve or the problems you cause. <laughs> so which one, which side are you? 
You come home now, all the children are dodging. Right, good, good. Daddy, daddy, daddy is back. So we'll fly like a pum. Woo! Bah. You shout. Please make your home a joy center. Make your environment. Jesus made his environment joy center. That's why he used to call people guy name. So husband and wife have pet names. Do you understand? It's a way to create joy. <laughs> I bishop with the also was asked one time, why do you always call your wife sweetheart? He said, what do you call your own bitter leaf? <laughs> create joy. Create joy anywhere. Jesus was calling his apostles guy name. He said, John and James, he said, you are sons of bonages. That's guy name now. <laughs> Just to create fun. He said, Peter, Piro, the rocky rock. <laughs> Please, anywhere you go, may your present bring joy. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. Health and vitality. Proverbs 18, verse 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit, who can bear? When your spirit is wounded, you are broken down. You are broken down. Number three. Joy engenders divine strength. Joy engenders what? Joy engenders what? How many of us want divine strength? You know, by strength shall no man prevail. You can't carry out a spiritual assignment with the energy of the flesh. <laughs> the same way. You know, I've told us here, one of the greatest lessons you learn in life is that everything is, you know, even business is spiritual. And any spiritual thing, you can't carry it out in the energy of the flesh. You'll break down. For Elijah, a man, to outrun the chariot of Ahab. You can imagine somebody moving with formatic bends, the highest speed, and then somebody is running and is is surpassing that person. You should know that there's no more energy of the flesh. Glory to God. Nehemiah 8 10. For the joy of the Lord is our what? Strength. Okay, do small mathematics now. Just remove. <laughs> they remove the joy of the Lord, the B part of Nehemiah 8.10. He said, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now remove of the Lord. You will see that joy is your strength. Did you understand that? Joy is what? So if you don't want to break down, be joyful. Every time he's spending me here, he's spending me here. What do you have? Others are having better time with their salvation. Your own is spending me here. Pastor, he will like say he has moved to this side. <laughs> Joy is strength. Ask people that have high blood pressure. I'm telling you, ask any medical person. Most times they advise them to play with children and to watch a cartoon. You know why? So that they can be joyful. <laughs> and they pay for it too. Something you can create by yourself. You are not paying to be advised. <laughs> Just be joyful. You will have strength. No breakdown. May divine strength be infused in us. Amen. In Jesus' glorious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Number four, finally, it secures access to divine presence. And every one of us will need that. It secures access to what? How many of us want divine presence? Please be joyful. You can't get it any other way. Be, 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 be joyful. Psalm 16 verse 11. Thou shalt show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. <laughs> Two pleasures in life. There's pleasure of sin, which is for a moment. And there's the pleasure of God's presence, which is forevermore. Make a choice. In your presence is fullness of joy. So that's how you, are, you know whether God is in that thing or not, whether God is with you or not. It's one of the ways to know. Any step you want to take, if you don't have peace and you don't have joy, sir, God is not there. I can give you the results. God is not there. They bring a proposal to you. Say, this business, if you do it now, you'll buy the whole South Africa. Good. 
Check your heart. Do you have joy? <laughs> Do you have peace? If you don't have it, God is not there. Run. It will bring sorrow. Run. Some a lady may look so beautiful, everything package. Both stretch. Eh? Nests. This one. <laughs> you see? God says, somebody show you say this is the person to marry. I beg, check your heart. If you don't have joy or peace, run. God is not there. <laughs> but something may look somehow. It may look somehow. But as you want to, anytime you even want to say, I'm not going to take the step. I'm not going to do it. You just see that you are filled with joy. You feel with peace. God is there. If you are following the school, say I hear. <laughs> Glory to God. Quickly as I close, how do I keep my joy alive? Because some get joy today, some they enjoy the joy of their salvation. When they got it in church, they got saved in church, they got the deposit of joy or salvation. When they got home, they, they took their life back and lost the joy. <laughs> so how do I keep my joy alive? If my joy must not dry up, how do I sustain my joy? Number one is to keep your faith alive. Keep your faith what? Alive. In as much as your faith is alive, your joy will be alive. But when you become hopeless, because faith, according to Hebrews 11:1, 1, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Without hope, faith is important. So when you are hopeless, you are helpless. That's why people commit suicide. You see a very big man, CEO of a company, making turnovers in billions of rand. You don't say the person committed suicide. <laughs> why? He became hopeless at a time. If you are not, for him that is joined to the living, there is hope for him. A living dog is better than a dead lion. Any day you wake up, you can see how the breath of God in your noses. Please don't lose hope. God has not finished with you yet. Regardless of the storms, regardless of the waves, regardless of the rains, if you can breathe in and breathe out, there is hope for you. Have you not seen people that before they push them down, everything in life pushed them down, but today they are up. If they gave up that place, no hope. Now hear me. You don't drown by falling into water. You drown by staying in the water. If you can rise up, you will shine again. Amen. So stop being hopeless. Keep your faith alive. Yes, it's remaining one month in this year, but God has not finished with me. Anything can still happen. Anything can still shall happen. I can still break record. I can still get to where I'm going. It doesn't tell God anything. Just one phone call is enough to change your life. Oh. Just one contact, divine contact, can change your story for life. Amen. And it doesn't take anything. Glory to God. So why are you killing yourself? Don't allow your hope to die. Don't allow anything to shake your hope. First Peter 1 Peter 1.8 Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now you see him, not yet believing. Ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's what the Bible calls joy unspeakable, full of glory. When you are hopeless, your faith is paralyzed. And depression, oppression, and suppression will take their turn. <laughs> when the devil wants to deal with you, the first thing he will do is to make you to be depressed. If you can be depressed, at the state of depression, the person can't see any hope. He can't see any light in the tunnel. The next one, he will come with his oppression. After oppression, suppression. After suppression, Beme. <laughs> Die. <laughs> oh, number two. How to keep my faith alive. Remain assured of eternity. Remain assured of eternity by being committed to what is required. Remain assured of eternity by being committed to what is required. 1 Corinthians 15, 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. If it's only in this world you have hope, sir, then we are heading for something that is not too good. God forbid. 
There will never be any one portion here. So everything you're doing, have eternity in mind. God oppressed in time and in eternity. He's the one that created time. Time is a fraction of eternity. After now, there is a place we'll be with him. And that is a place of joy. That's why I told us here before. You see, there are some ministries that will end here. Ministry of prayer will end on the earth here. Even faith will end on the earth here. You don't need faith in heaven. But you see this ministry of the choir and singing. We need it in heaven. Joy and rejoicing. You must, that's what, one of the things we'll be doing. We'll be singing and rejoicing in heaven. Non-stop. Unlimited. <laughs> so you better practice it here. <laughs> Look at Jesus. Hebrews 12, 1 to 2. We have foreseen he are also compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses. Lay, let us lay aside every word and the same which doth easily beset us. And let us run with the patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, you could see eternity. You could see the end. Joy was set before him. He endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Many of the things that keeping many people poor today, keeping people down, is they don't understand the law of delayed gratification. They want everything now, 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 now. They want to enjoy everything now, now, now. Wait is a process of income plus consistency and time, just like life. Things happen in the process of time. No. Jesus saw the joy before him. That's why they slapped him. They spit on him. They mocked him. <laughs> he said, these people don't know. I know where I'm going. You can't keep me here. That's why you see white people. People criticize them. They don't respond. They know where they're going. Now, I want to ask you a question. Please, I come. If this is 100 meters dash, eh? 100 meters. Do you know 100 meters dash? 100 meters. Eh? Yes. I say, oh, your mass. Okay, guess, oh, your mass. Guess said, go. You are not running. And somebody says, stupid head. See your head. If you hear it, you will not make it. I didn't say if you turn, no. If you had that thing, eh? You will not get there. <laughs> not to talk of you turn. Not to talk of you not say, me? A whole me? You are talking. <laughs> you <laughs> Can you imagine that? So why are you distracted by what people are saying or what they're not saying? People are entitled to the opinion. That's why it's called the opinion. They have the opinion. You can't stop them. They have the opinion. Don't be distracted. Focus on where you're going. Focus on the price of the high calling. You press towards the price of the high calling. Don't allow anything to stop you. And I say, Pastor, is it what they're talking about me? If you see what I don't like, Pastor, I don't understand. You won't get there. Now hear me. If I want to stop this man, somebody was asked, if you're a devil, what will you do to stop somebody? One of the things he said is distraction. Distraction. It will distract you from getting to where you're going. He may not be wicked. Just distract you. Just be doing other things. He may be replying to the complaint. And most of the time, you know, critics, they don't go anywhere. That is their ministry. Allow them. Let them do their ministry. Be making progress. Amen. That's why the Bible called them backbiters. They don't buy the front. They buy the back. So if you don't want them to bite your back, keep making progress. Keep going. At the time come, they want to buy, they can't reach you. They say, these are children of the most high. Rise on your feet. <laughs> <laughs> you now come back, you settle with them. You say, me? You are, what are you talking about me now? I didn't do it, I did it. You are wasting your time. You won't get to where you're going. Don't allow them to distract you. Don't allow them to stop me. Stop you. Say with me, I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. I, have joy. I have joy. No one will take my joy from me. I pray for you. Every joy killer will never enter your life again. <laughs> you know there are joy killers. Some unfriendly friends. You tell them this is what God, God is saying I should build, build an estate now. Is there you? Has anybody ever done it in your family? Ah, you want to throw your money away. Don't try it, oh. 
They want you to be there. <laughs> Such people will not enter your life. Yeah. Are, are you getting me now? Anyone afraid of your future should never enter your life in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You know, sometimes your future can intimidate people. So that's why they talk against you, they criticize you, they fight you, they make sure you to put break on your progress. But tell them, you can't stop me. Jesus, for the joy that was there before him. He said, if you like, beat me, laugh at me, mock me, I'm getting to where I'm going. You will get to where you're going. And this year will end the for you. Now, before we rejoice in the Lord this morning, I want to give opportunity to some people. Honestly, you gave your life to Jesus on the board. Right now, you don't have joy again. You knew it. Listen, be sincere. You don't have joy. You don't have joy. You don't have peace. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, he wants to help you. He wants to secure you. Now, you want to say like David, restore to me the joy of salvation. Maybe that's your heart cry. If you are here this morning, therefore, you want to surrender to Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. You want to, that joy to return to you. Please carry your bag, whatever you came to church with. Walk to the front of the altar here. Please come and meet me here. This is very, very crucial. Take that step right now. Somebody is here, you want Jesus in your life. You want the joy of salvation to be restored to you. You can't feel God anymore. And you want to say, I can't continue this way. I need you, Jesus. Please take a step. Come. Come, carry your bag, your Bible, whatever you come to church with.